I think the biggest news item right now uh, in the United States, e even though it doesn't necessarily appear in the headlines everywhere, are, are the ongoing protests all over campuses all over the U.S. Uh, uh, yesterday and this morning, uh, yesterday in particular, there were uh, demonstrations at Emory University in Atlanta uh, and, uh, and uh, basically in probably two dozen universities all around the country. Uh, University of Texas in Austin made news uh, because uh, there was a, a big demonstration there. The, the police were called out. Uh, the police basically arrested, I think, 60, 62 people uh, and, and uh, put them in handcuffs, took them to jail. I think ultimately uh, the, um, uh, they were released uh, and, and they, weren't, they, they weren't indicted, but they were released. But uh, they were taking off campus. Uh, it, it, that has resulted in a number of different things that I think are uh, of interest. One is, <sighs> why do you arrest protesters, right? Why are protesters arrested? And if you're arresting protesters because you don't like what they're saying, that's a clear violation of free speech. If the police are literally dragging people away because they're anti-Semitic, then that is clear violation of free speech. And if you look at what Greg Abbott, uh, you know, tweeted, Greg Abbott, for those of you who don't know, is the, uh, the um, uh, governor of uh, Texas. Uh, you know, and if you've seen videos of uh, the, this... I mean, the police show up in basically military gear. It looks pretty scary, uh, you know, uh, and, and start arresting demonstrators. Some of them are resisting arrest, so it gets a little violent. But this is what Greg Abbott says. Arrests being made right now and will continue until the crowd disperses. These protesters belong in jail. You might ask, why do they belong in jail? Anti-Semitism will not be tolerated in Texas, period. Students joining in hate-filled anti-Semitic protests at any public college or university in Texas should be expelled. You can't arrest people because they're anti-Semitic. That is a clear violation of the First Amendment. That is a clear violation, an anti-free speech. And, and sadly, you know, I think the Greg Babbitt believes that. You can arrest demonstrators if they threaten, if they harass, Certainly in places like uh, Columbia University, that has been much of, of, uh, of what they've been doing, threatening, harassing. You can certainly arrest protesters if they're being disruptive, if they're preventing classes from being held, they're preventing people from moving about campus, they are preventing people from going about their business. That is reason to arrest them. Right? But, and, and, and that, is, that is protecting free speech by rejecting people who want to force their opinion on others yeah. and who want to intimidate anybody who disagrees with them into silence, because that's what these people are doing. They're intimidating, they're harassing. So you're protecting the free speech of those who they're trying to intimidate. But you're not, you're not protecting free speech when you arrest them for being anti-Semites. That's a violation of free speech. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's the fact that they, uh, you know, so the arrests are wanted because they're interfering with the functioning of campus and they are, um, they're not dispersing when they're asked to be dispersed and they are clearly intimidating the people around them and threatening and so on. I think there's a lot of confusion about free speech. And, and, and uh, a, a lot of uh, misapplication of the free speech principle. By the way, a, a private university like Columbia, uh, by the way, in Columbia, what's going on is uh, they're negotiating. <laughs> the protesters, which have clearly, completely upended campus life, completely upended 
the flow of campus life disrupted the education. Education in Colombia has gone online because they can't, they can't actually run classes on, on, uh, offline in class because of these demonstrations. Complete disruption. Um, so in, in Colombia, uh, the, uh, the president of the university set a deadline two days ago of midnight. That got pushed out into the morning. Then it got pushed out to 48 hours. And now it's like there's this indefinite uh, uh, negotiation between the president and the demonstrators about how many tents, how many people, what they can say, how much they can disrupt, what they can do. I mean, the, the weakness is, is truly pathetic. These people do not belong on campus. They are interfering with the university's educational mission. It, this is pretty straightforward. This is pretty simple stuff. So the president of the university is negotiating. Who knows how that's going to end? Um, she, it, she's in this funny situation, though. It, it, it is kind of, um, it is kind of funny because on the one hand, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's his name? House Speaker Johnson uh, was uh, went to the campus yesterday and uh, demanded that she resign uh, because she hasn't been tough enough on the demonstrator. Demonstrators, I think he's actually right. I think that is good enough reason to have her resign. Uh, and uh, called for a resignation, an immediate, you know, uh, bringing in the police, calling in the police, and getting, getting these demonstrators out of there and returning Columbia to being an educational institution where students can actually learn. The student senate comprised of about 100 people, faculty, students, I guess administrators, the faculty senate is about to censure the president of the university for being too tough on the demonstrators, in particular for last Saturday, inviting the police onto campus to arrest and, and withdraw the demonstrators, which they did uh, that only, they, 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 they got rid of 100, and as a consequence of that, many, several hundred came. Um, and, then, and then they just left them alone, so they didn't go all the way. So on the one hand, on the one hand, you've got a situation where the, uh, the politicians and certain advocates are demanding the president be tough and, and get rid of these demonstrators. On the other hand, you've got a situation where you've got, uh, uh, you've got um, uh, the faculty senate and much of the faculty themselves demanding that, no, protests should, protests should go on. And, uh, uh, you know, the, it's the president of the university that should be fired forever dreaming that these people should be arrested or, or restrained in any kind of way uh, with their activism. Uh, this, is, this is where we are today in America, uh, where you cannot, you cannot stop people, I guess, from on a university campus from uh, creating mayhem, destruction, and uh, threatening and harassing, and again, not allowing classes to proceed. It doesn't get any worse than that. Uh, in my view, you know, universities should have rules about behavior and even about certain elements of speech. You can't, for example, shouldn't be able to go into a class where uh, people are speaking, where, where somebody is being taught, I don't know, chemistry, and start yelling and disrupting the class and preventing it from proceeding. And you could say, but you've got free speech. It's a public university, and therefore you have free speech. You have free speech gives you the ability to yell in the middle of a classroom and prevent the class from continuing. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Even though it's a, quote, public space, it has to be treated as if uh, at least at that level, as if it's, a, it's, a, it's an organization, it has rules and principles, and you can't disrupt what's going on. Even if that means silencing you in order to stop the disruption. That is not speech. That is action. That is preventing, uh, 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 preventing the class, the university, from doing 
the function for which it exists. Uh, but again, so much confusion, so much of the left is up in arms about, oh, people have a right to free speech, therefore can't touch them. And people on the right saying, arrest them, they're anti-Semites. We do not have hate speech laws in the United States. Thank the Constitution and the First Amendment, thanks to the founders. We do not have hate speech laws. You can express hate. Um, the university should be, should have rules around this um, and, and that are consistent, right? If, if you are allowed to express hate against Jews then at a university, then you should be allowed to express hate against, I don't know, uh, 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 short people uh, and allowed to express hate against a anybody, no matter whether they're, quote, protected minority or not. Uh, so you need a consistency. But you cannot, even as speaking, you cannot disrupt. You cannot stop. Uh, so Abbott is wrong for the reasons he's doing what he's doing. And in a sense, him being wrong about it, his anti-free speech position is unbelievably dangerous. Unbelievably dangerous in some ways more dangerous than what the protests are doing, uh, because if this is perceived as the justification for doing away with them, if this is perceived as the right approach to free speech, we need to get rid of anti-Semitic speech, that would be, that would be truly, uh, uh, truly horrific. And uh, who would be left? I mean, uh, where do we get a protection of free speech? So... Uh, Abbott needs to go to re-education class and study the First Amendment and what it actually says and what it actually, uh, what it actually means. Um, Greg Abbott, not one of the good guys. Not one of the good guys in the big picture of things. Um, oh, wait, I, I, I don't know where this ends. I, I don't know where this ends. Uh, the reality is that... Um, uh, it, 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 looks like, uh, it looks like these protests are going to continue. Uh, you know, I think the only way for them to end is uh, for the police to get really tough, in a sense, zero tolerance. Uh, you know, I declare that any kind of disruption, whether it's on campus, on the streets, will not be tolerated and shut it down immediately. I think that's the only way it can stop it. The challenge is this, and, and this came out at UT today. The challenge is, I talked about this yesterday, the professors support this. At least a certain percentage of them said UT today. Professors called for new demonstrations today to demonstrate what the police did yesterday and in solidarity with the Palestinians and all the rest of it. By the way, uh, GB News called today, and uh, I was on this morning. Those of you in the UK, maybe you can find it. If, if you if you have if you stream GB, GB News, I'd appreciate it if anybody found a link to it, if you could send it to me. But I was on GB News today, uh, this morning, at least this morning my time, uh, afternoon uh, London time, talking about uh, the protests, <laughs> and you could tell that the hosts of the show did not know what to do with me <laughs> because I did not say what they expected me to say. Um, and uh, they thought I would rile against the anti-Semitism of the protesters. And instead, I railed against the curriculum that they're studying, the influence of their professors, the ideas that they have, uh, and the whole educational establishment. Uh, I, I, I railed against not th th their statements, which, but then I railed against them, not just for the anti-Semitism, but also for the very fact that they are supporting evil, that Hamas is evil, that they're not protesting, uh, you know, the girls in Iran, they're not protesting the civil war in Syria, they're not protesting the, uh, the imprisonment of an atheist in Saudi Arabia. What they're interested in is hatred of Israel, hatred of Western civilization, hatred of 
success and prosperity, and their professors are at fault. I don't think they expected any of that. I don't think they expected me to call uh, basically the Arab world evil regimes. Uh, I think they were a little, a little surprised. Anyway, we'll, we'll see if they ever invite me back. That will be interesting.